This is a quick example of a plain vanilla interest rate swap. Remember, in a plain vanilla swap, one party agrees to pay the fixed rate while receiving the floating interest rate from the counterparty. In this example, firm A is a triple A rated firm, while B has a credit rating of triple B. As such, firm A can borrow at a lower rate than B in all cases. Here, if firm A chooses to take out a fixed rate loan, for example, the cost is only 6%, which is a full percentage point less than the comparable cost for firm B. In the floating rate market, the quality spread difference is even greater. It's going to be 2%. Firm A would pay only LIBOR plus 1% while B pays LIBOR plus 3%. Remember, LIBOR is the short-term interest rate payable on a Euro-dollar loan. LIBOR stands for London Interbank Offered Rate. So, in the floating rate market, where the quality spread is greater, we find that this spread of 2% gives a spread difference of 100 basis points. This one percentage point right here represents the amount by which the floating rate quality spread exceeds the uh, fixed interest rate quality spread. So this spread difference here of 1% is actually the bounty that would have to be shared in some fashion by these two firms. In this case, they have agreed to split it 50-50, but it could actually be in any ratio. Now though, in this transaction, firm A would actually prefer to take out a fixed rate loan, which would cost it, as we see here, only 6%. However, to ensure that the effective cost of borrowing is lower for both firms, firm A should borrow in the loan market in which it has the greater comparative cost advantage, and that is in the floating rate market, where quality spread is the highest. Well, it's higher than in the fixed rate market. So, the, in the final analysis, this is what it's going to come down to. Firm A will wind up paying only 5.5%, which is actually equal to the 6% it would have cost it if it were to take out a fixed uh, rate loan, minus its share of the uh, quality spread difference of the spread difference of 1%. Its share, remember, is 50 basis points, which is 0.5%. And on the flip side, firm B will wind up paying floating of LIBOR plus 2.5%, which is what it would have cost firm B to take out a floating rate loan, which we see here to be LIBOR plus 3 minus its share of the uh, spread difference of 50 basis points. So that's what I've shown right here. So this is actually going to be the outcome. And how is this going to work? Well, rather than take out a fixed rate loan, as I mentioned already, which is actually what firm A desires to do, what's going to happen is that firm A would borrow floating rate, uh, take out a floating rate loan at LIBOR plus 1% and then give it over to B. On the other hand, B would take out a fixed rate loan at 7%, which I show here, and then swap it over to A. However, A will wind up paying only, as I show here, 5.5%. How so? Well, when A receives this 7%, it pays only 5.5%, which, as you remember, would have to equal how much it would have had to pay minus its share of the quality spread difference. So the unpaid amount of 1.5% is still left with firm B. Meaning therefore that when firm B receives this LIBOR of 1% coupled with the unpaid 1.5% that it still retains 
it'll wind up being LIBOR plus 2.5 percent. So let me show it out. So right here, Firm A pays Firm B's fixed rate loan of 7 percent but only 5.5 percent, leaving 1.5 percent with B. Again, that amounts to Firm A's fixed rate loan rate of 6 percent uh, minus 0.5 percent. So the savings of 0.5 percent is that quality spread difference. And Firm B would pay all of the floating rate uh, interest rate of LIBOR plus 1 plus the unpaid fixed rate of 1.5 that Firm A left with B unpaid so that the total payment now comes to LIBOR plus 1 plus 1.5 which is LIBOR plus 2.5 nevertheless Firm B enjoys savings of 50 basis points saving 0.5 percent over this LIBOR plus 3 percent. And so by sharing the quality spread difference equally the swap payments become exactly what we noted at the outset from A paying 5.5 percent which represents what it would have had to pay if it took out a fixed rate loan minus its share of the bounty which is 0.5 percent and therefore Firm B paying what it would have had to pay if it took out a floating rate loan at LIBOR plus 3 but net of its own share of the bounty of 50 basis points it winds up paying only LIBOR plus 2.5 percent and that's it. I'm Pedro B. Professor of Finance Purdue University, Calumet.